Hi guys, welcome to Clash Club. This is Mag here for yet another video on Rise of Nations. Today we're gonna see how to play Lakota. Learn it from pro. So young one is playing Lakota here, and we're gonna see how to play Lakota because Lakota has always been a challenge for the newbies. And hence we're gonna find it out. I have tried to cut the PC's game volume so that the commentary could be here properly. So to start with, if you look at it, the population is 8 and uh, he has sent all the 8 villages for scouting for different directions. So you can see one here, one here, one here, one here, one going here, one is already here. Several benefits out of it. One, Lakota, if you look at it, they make a lot of food for every citizen, plus four food for every citizen, scout and cavalry units. So with nine citizens out there, he's already making 36 food out there. Though. So before investing the food on the wood camp, at least send six villages for scouting. And the second benefit is you identify the rares so that you can raid it out and also you can use it out. And last but not least, uh, you identify where the enemies are and accordingly you can build um, because you know Lakota is borderless so you can build anywhere you don't have to necessarily build on your own border. So finally he gets a woodcutter here and since um, Lakota doesn't have the pressure of pressure to build forms um, so we can invest all the villages on woodcutter after you have sent the minimum number of villages to scouting which means your wood is going to increase a lot so the first research as a Lakota I would do is science because science requires if you look at it requires only timber and belt and all your villages right now apart from scouting are on the wood camp which means that you are going to make a lot of wood come back to the foot and all you need is one ruin of wealth because you start with 50 wealth and now it becomes 75 after one ruin. So you can go for science quickly. The big advantage is, as you know, once you do the science, it reduces any subsequent researches by 10%. So even your commerce research doesn't require 90 food anymore. Since you have done science, it only requires 81, 81 because you get 10% off in that. As you see, he completes the signs first, so I'm going to slightly fast track a bit. It is not that signs is always done for temple. So here, if you look at it, he's not going for temple. The only reason he completed signs is because he has enough resources to complete the signs. Plus, he can do a cheap commerce, which is what exactly he will be performing. So he has done <coughs> the commerce next before completing the temple, which is key. And it's also very vital, guys, for the teammates uh, to point out if the Lakotian villagers have missed any of the ruin while scouting so that um, he or she can immediately go and get that ruin back. As you see, he completes the sign, so your commerce is second to search. And we will send one more village. And he also, now the third research and the most important research is the civic here because now we have to identify where you're going to build. He has option to build here, but this is not a great rare, so I don't think so he would go here. This is kind of okay, he already has a lot of wood, so I don't think so he would be interested in that. So unfortunately there is not a good rare in the center, so he might tilt toward blue, um, so that his borders extend at the same time blue is also protected. And finally he builds the market. And since he got the first wear here, he's obviously going to do milli quick. But even if the first wear is not there, you have to do milli with Lakota before going to H2, unless until you have any other good reason not to. Because you have identified all the rares, you have identified most of the enemies, now go and raid it out. So doing milli is very beneficial here. I'm going to slightly fast track a bit more.
since it's purposely on how to play Lakota, I'm not gonna be interested to show um, how the rest of the players are doing in this. So my focus is purely gonna be on LO and LO only. Very likely, people build their senate or the capital on the place where the army is there. So, since Lakota is going to attack from this civic base, very likely the senate could be there. But there's also a potential danger if you look at it. Orange is somewhere here and very close by. So, if you're going to build a senate here and then go for an attack on, say, like white or um, red or anyone like that here, then the orange will sneak into his capital. So that's risky as well. So in that case, it's better to build the Senate out here. But let's see what is the idea. So he starts with the barrack, having completed the melee. Fast track a bit more. So now he got his first troop and is building a temple now. You can see he did not build a temple here so just because you complete your signs doesn't mean that you have to build temple everywhere even though temple is good um, it is gonna get you completion bonus of 30 wealth as well so it's good trade for 80 to 30 80 wood to 30 wealth but if you look at it the second temple is gonna cost you 110 wood and you're still gonna get only 30 uh, wealth though so it's, it's still not a great idea to build temple everywhere unless until you have a specific reason. I will definitely build a temple on capital. And since the second city is way too far and it's a key place for all your resources, I wouldn't mind building a temple here as well, but later not right now. Just going to fast track a bit. So now he having acquired his res and controlling it with all the merchants. He wants to slow the opponent by raiding the merchants as well. So you already saw the opponent has not used one um, rare. The second rare, Bison, uh, which is a favorite of most of the one players because it gives you plus 20 foot. The two crucial merchants of the opponents are killed, which is definitely going to slow the momentum of it. So this adds enough pressure on the opponents now they have to do melee as well to counter the raid otherwise they cannot use the rares so they will be definitely doing a melee just to counter it otherwise they're gonna keep losing all the rares you can see red has gone to h2 now which means that that would have given a little bit um, 10 to 15 percentage of age uh, upgrade bonus that means he can go into h2 quickly so having got his tower here, having got his barrack here, my initial guess is Senate here too, but he goes for Senate here because I think his idea is to gonna target red out here so that even if orange sneaks in, the maximum he's gonna do is just lose his village as his capital is gonna be behind. Because if orange is gonna go all the way towards his capital here, then blue can assist yellow out. And also Elo got the maximum number of villages in woodcutters. You may also have a few miners here. So you can see he definitely has one here. So we can use them for Milita and then safeguard his um, capital in case when and where required. The plan is very clear. He's going to go on attack mode. Uh, that's why he's building the Senate bank. And then it is also very clear he's going to go towards red. Because if you look at it, red one uh, boundary is here. Uh, second boundary is somewhere here. So sec red playing Persian is going to definitely have two capitals. So one capital is here, one capital is here. So unless it is going to be a team game, um, it's not going to be easy to bring red down here. So the idea would be simple, Elo to go for the capital here. There should be one capital of red here and the second capital of red somewhere here. So while Elo could go here, purple and, and, and light blue could pressure 
uh, read on the other category. So blue is just safeguarding any kind of sneak in entry from orange here. Slightly fast track a bit more. Generally in Lakota, I would love to have Sunka Vankan, uh, that is the horse archers, over the normal archers. Just for the reason it's going to get me some food as well, because as you know, in Lakota, every cavalry unit is going to get food. So generally invest a lot on Sunka Vankan over archers for Lakota, and then heavy infantry is over here. But young one is slightly playing different. Um, he is putting more effort on archers here and we just gonna focus on uh, light horse and um, cataphract from the stable though okay slight bit of fast track okay what was this so he has gone for river plague um, unless until you're in a real desperate rush mode I wouldn't go for despot because in a short run um, or a short game despot is very productive in a long game um, Republic will always win okay. I'm never saying that in a short game um, a Republic will lose but despot definitely have an edge but Republic have an edge um, in long game and still will not do bad even in a short game either because it does have that healing benefits so he has got um let me see two siege machines and a total of six heavy infantries uh, four archers and two light horses as expected the fast track a bit more Meanwhile, Red is busily raiding um, Elo out here with the elephant. The drawback um, here for Elo is elephant killing an elephant gonna be very difficult with heavy infantry or villages. And you cannot bribe unless we have a senator in age one with Republic. But since Red is raiding, uh, Elo is taking advantage to go first capital. As you can see, the senator is here. Fast track it a bit more. So it's more like a rush of blood even before waiting for the siege um, he just wanted to capture the capital ASAP so he's got a huge uh, cap bonus here because Persians um, to get the full cap bonus you have to capture both capitals so it's still a partial bonus only but still the advantage is he won a city here plus the cap bonus plus the enemy's economy is disturbed big time with all the villages are killed here scholars are killed here and you have to reconstruct everything and red challenge for him is um, he has to focus on two different places one here one here so it's going to be real challenging for red to win this back I'm also going to quickly show the game stats. If you look at the 29 kill or 30 kill right now with just 7 loss, so that's enormous damage on Red's equal though. You can see the Red score as well. The scores never lie 1, 2, 3, 6 versus 2, 5, 5, 2, which means uh, LO is almost um, double stronger compared to Red. Red is still raiding LO out, but the damage LO inflicted on Red is way too high. Why is the best with a few um, archers and uh, heavy infantry because you still have the barrack here with LO's uh, siege machine skilled it's going to be an uphill task for um, LO to actually um, control this area 
So you might have to make some troops immediately ASAP and that's what he's doing, making sieges because he has to destroy these barracks because he's going to keep building troops to win his capital back. Meanwhile, Green is trying to apply pressure on uh, Purple here. But the advantage for them is now it's going to be 2v1 or I would say 2 um, to 1.5 because Red half the army uh, is supporting here and the other half army have to win the capital back. That's what he's doing. Um, having known that um, Elo's army is gone, Elo since he doesn't have the siege machines yet, he's busy doing the raiding meanwhile and uh, building the other population. Lakota not necessarily need to have a short game always guys but Nomad um, Lakota's capability to attack in age 2 is much faster than any other nation. So now you can see why he didn't build a senate here uh, because he was clearly anticipating the danger from orange and also white. So they will pile they will pile some pressure for him here though. We're busy on the raiding spree at the moment. At the same time, he has also built enough troops to defend his um, friend city. So damage is inflicting by raiding all the merchants is huge guys uh, because he's not just killing um, one member's merchant, he's killing every every member's merchant everywhere. Which means the eco of everyone is battered. Now he has jumped into green's eco as well. All the villages have been sheltered within the town center which means that uh, his echo is slow and, and hence uh, do we 1.5 is going to be difficult for green to defend here. At least white and um, orange should pile the pressure on blue here but they were somewhat slow which is giving um, a low ample time to mount pressure on, on green. So while he's mounting pressure on green the idea is simple um, guys, this is the um, trick that Yang One is playing. Is actually um, um, acting as if he's raiding Green, so that Red would assume that uh, he's busy here, and hence the focus may not be here. And meanwhile, he can send his army to recapture Red's capital. So it's two advantage, one um, confusing Red that he's busy on Green. And second, uh, he's killing Green's uh, resources as well. And also third, uh, Green has to Green's economy slow down, and he and he has to bring back some of the troops to to keep this city in check while Purple and Light Blue can capture the city out. So it is a good team game, and then amazing uh, strategy and coordination. So now he has amassed enough troops to go back and capture Red's capital. While these guys have captured a Green's friend city, now they're going to march into Red's capital city here, second capital, uh, as he's playing Persians. Okay, check. So all blue has to defend, um, even though it's 2v1, he just have to do his defend here. Meanwhile, White has captured uh, Elo's frontline city. Not bad, but um, is not kind of any help uh, because Elo has already marched into Red's capital here, while um, Purple and Teal have marched into the other side. So one capital of red is captured and is marched and is advancing towards H3. I'm gonna quickly follow the action here. While well, these guys capture Red's other frontline city. So it's gonna be instant death if they capture it, I guess, because I don't see red any other city from red anywhere.
but is doing his best to defend it. Is very low on the score, very low on the resources. And is instant death. He is defeated. So now having um, defeated Red, I think um, Elo has two options either to go and win his uh, city back or go and attack Green. I think uh, he might choose to go for Green to eliminate as many enemies as possible. And already you can see Green has resigned, so um, he would drop that idea and then go back to winning his city back. It's more of a formality from here, guys. As you can see, two opponents have already resigned with little or no impact to Elo here because he just lost one city and then he built his next city uh, very nearby. So 64 kill to 20 losses, amazing play. So hope you guys um, learn how to play Lakota. Um, hope this video is beneficial for the newbies who are planning to play this game and struggling specifically with Lakota. Lakota in Nomad is, is a damaging nation, guys. Um, it, is, it is a nightmare for the opponent. So if you know to play it right, um, it's a win-win situation every time. It's Mag here signing off until I see you on yet another video for Rise of Nations and Clash Club. Thank you, guys.